Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, I'm talking about the new album from Roiksop, Profound Mysteries. Wow, Roiksop. Now, there's a name I hadn't thought about in a long time. <laughs> I have actually covered this Norwegian down-tempo synth-pop duo before. Way back in the early days of this channel, a friend of mine requested I covered their debut album from 2001, Melody AM. And since that was back when my channel was small enough that I could take random requests like that for free, I was happy to oblige. While I wouldn't consider these guys, like, major personal favorites, I did briefly get into them, like, really early on in my high school days, and I have a bit of nostalgia for some of their stuff, and I cannot deny that their debut is in fact a classic. But I was not expecting these guys to put out a new album, since their last one from 2014 was called The Inevitable End, and uh, supposedly was going to be the last time they released something in the traditional album format. I guess that went over as well as LCD Sound System's breakup, huh? <laughs> oh well, I won't complain about getting the chance to go back over my thoughts on their other work and seeing where I stand. I do recall none of their other albums ever reaching the heights of their debut, but I went back through their catalog to reconfirm my feelings, and here's my thoughts on their discography so far. Yeah, this still holds up. Pretty much stand by what I said in my video years ago. It's admittedly still not an all-time favorite or the kind of thing that, like, hits on that greater transcendental level for me, but I can see this slotting the same spot in other people's lives that Air's Moon Safari does in my own life. It's an all-around really catchy and laid-back and well-varied collection of down-tempo synth-pop and trip-hop material that can pretty easily hit those old nostalgia buttons. All ten tracks are good, but So Easy and Roiksop's Night Out are by far the biggest highlights for me. The former though is probably still standing as my favorite track of theirs overall. Now, while their debut was already pretty commercial, uh, pretty much all their stuff afterwards was a lot more commercial and radio-friendly and pretty much just landed in straight vocal synth-pop territory. The kind of thing that felt markedly less interesting to me, especially as a kid. Although I will give them credit that this album is better than I remember. The vocals, most of which they contribute themselves, are a bit hit and miss, and sometimes have like this air of try-hard forced coolness that brings down tracks like 49% or Circuit Breaker. And the album really should have just ended with the track Alpha Male. That would have been the perfect closer, and the actual ending is pretty anti-climax. But there are probably more moments that hit than those that don't, with lots of hard-hitting grooves to go around, see Triumphant, Only This Moment, Follow My Ruin, Someone Like Me, and of course the big single, What Else Is There, which is just a complete ripoff of Bjork, but uh, at least captures her appeal well enough that I could mistake it for the real thing. Album is not great, but it is good. This was actually the album that first introduced me to Roiksop in the era when I used Pandora for music recommendations. Their track Roiksop Forever showed up, I got into it pretty immediately, loved all the string sections on that one. The album as a whole is basically a much stronger and more consistent refinement of the synth-pop sound on their last album. Every track has lots of bright and colorful melodies and super full-sounding and sugary synth productions, taking influence from the likes of Giorgio Moroder. Listening to the entire thing front to back can admittedly sometimes feel like I've had a bit too much dessert, but I do enjoy every single track on this thing, and the best moments, like Happy Up Here, The Girl and the Robot, and of course Rorik's Up Forever, are so good that they made the entire album into a long-term keeper anyway. In retrospect, yeah, between how consistent it is and the longevity it's had for me, probably just scrapes into great territory as well. And this, as you might guess from the title, is basically a companion album to Junior, uh, where a lot of the same mixes of synths are recontextualized into a much more sedate and depressing all-instrumental down-tempo album with a much more stripped-back, lo-fi production style. When I heard this one in high school, it went in one ear and out the other. But coming back to it now, while I still wouldn't call it anything essential, I do really like all the obvious air influences on display throughout, especially in the bass lines. And uh, while it has a pretty lackluster start, it did markedly pick up once I got to the track Senior Living, and everything from that point onwards is pretty solid. It's a good album. Should probably also mention this EP they did with Robin, since it's one of their most popular releases and even got them a Grammy nomination. Nothing on here is as good as The Girl and the Robot, but it's pretty cool. 
a lot more Electro House and EDM-ish on average, but bookended with two near 10 minute cuts that are much lower key and ambient leaning. Sounds like the kind of thing the Grammys would love, if not for the stars aligning for a new Aphex Twin album to come out the same year. <laughs> and that EP was followed up by what was then advertised as their final album, including a bit of material from said EP reworked into this new context. I distinctly remember being really bored by this album when it first came out and I never touched it since, and coming back to it now, eh, still not really a fan. I'll admit I forgot the punchier moments, like the first two tracks and the cuts with Suzanne Sunfor, which are pretty good, and Thank You is actually a really nice heartfelt finish, but so much of this project is taken up by flavorless ballads that seem to go on forever, and the same minor key chord progressions repeating over and over. Not to mention the entire project is much more cleanly produced to fit with the EDM scene at the time, and doesn't feel like it has the same warmth or personality to it that their previous albums did. It makes these guys feel burnt out and kind of out of place in a scene that's moved on from the approach they cut their teeth on, and it does run on too long for how little ideas they seemingly had left. For what it's worth, I know my take on this one goes against the grain. Most seem to regard it as pretty solid, and I myself find it more mid than outright bad, but I still think it was a pretty underwhelming send-off that left me feeling, eh, maybe it's for the best that these guys don't put out another album. Until they do, I guess. So yeah, wow, I, for a band that I didn't think I had especially strong feelings on, I had a lot more to say than I expected. Nostalgia does weird things to people. I guess as complicated as my feelings are, I do still care about these guys' music at the end of the day, and that was what had me hopeful for this comeback. With the eight-year break and the fact that they dared to follow up an album called The Inevitable End, perhaps that meant they were finally going to feel recharged and have some quality material up their sleeve. Or maybe they didn't and just needed the extra money from the 2000s nostalgia wave. <laughs> but this album has been seeing pretty positive reviews so far, so I jumped in with my fingers crossed. And as it turns out, well, it's definitely a Reichsop album, with every bit of baggage that entails, both positive and negative. Sonically, it's pretty cohesive, similar mix of down-tempo and synth-pop they're known for, very ethereal and airy stuff that has some time for some occasional more hard-hitting grooves, still got some of the polished digital sheen left over from their Inevitable End era, but they further refined the synth tones to give them more of that warmer and more analog feel like their older stuff from the Junior era. And in terms of actual song quality, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some tracks that really hit, and others that are just kind of tedious. Still averaging out to a good album, if not a great one. It certainly starts out pretty strong with the first handful of tracks. After a nice little piano intro and Nothing But Ashes, the opener proper, The Ladder, is a pretty nice little down-tempo mix with some deep bass lines, ethereal and nostalgic synth washes, and a few airy guitar licks for good measure. Getting strong air vibes out of this cut, which is always a good thing. Uh, both from the chord progression and the way the track builds from fairly low-key and breezy territory into something with a bit more energy and retro flair. Definitely fits with Roiksop's usual M.O. and pulled me in pretty effectively. Then we get two more hard-hitting and up-tempo cuts. All the more up-tempo cuts on this album turned out to be highlights, like the driving grooves of Impossible, featuring some gritty distorted electro bass, and the vocal presence of Alison Goldfrapp. As the longtime Orbital fan that I am, I'll always look forward to hearing her voice on a track. She even hits a couple of impressive high notes on this one. It's, it's a really solid track here. And this time, this place with Becky Mari is probably just the strongest cut in the bunch. A seven minute, like, progressive house epic, with all its rollicking and blocky bass grooves continually building and ending up in among the most hard hitting and satisfying payoffs Roiksop have ever come up with. The track's last two minutes do end up in comparatively lower key territory that sounded like it was. that could have built up to one last payoff at the end, but just didn't. But. Oh well, it, track is still fantastic on its own. Perhaps unfortunately though, the album does get a lot spottier from that point onwards. There is one more big highlight in Breathe with Astrid S, incidentally the last more energetic and up-tempo moment the album has to offer, but beyond that there's a few uh, lower key moments that have the same sense of airy openness that much of the rest of the album carries but just end up kind of meandering on. See How the Flowers Grow and There Beyond the Trees. They've got some nice atmosphere, but aren't all that attention-grabbing on their own and don't deliver especially compelling ideas. 
I'll also admit that I was kind of let down by the cuts with Suzanne Sun for. While her vocal performances are great as they always are, the two tracks she appears on are kind of forgettable ambient ballads. If You Want Me definitely came off to me as the weaker of the two. The chord progression on that one felt kind of cliche and melodramatic in a particular way that ended up more tedious than emotionally resonant. And while The Morning Sun was significantly better from a musical perspective and made for a fairly relaxed finish to the album, I wouldn't say it was a track I'd see myself, like, going out of my way to hear on its own. Also, the album ends in an interlude called Press R, which is totally pointless. It's, it's just some robotic female voice saying, Press R to continue several times. Didn't really need to be there if you ask me. So yeah, that's everything on Profound Mysteries. In a weird way, I think my thoughts on this album as a whole kind of ended up like a metaphor for my thoughts on their entire career as a whole. It's got its fair share of ups and downs, individual moments which hit really impressive heights, and others that are just kind of boring. Averaging out to an album that I'm probably not going to have especially strong memories with, but has just enough quality to land it within good territory. Just like how Roiksop are a band that I don't love, but I do like and still care enough about to want to talk about. However much you cared about them before will probably dictate how much you end up caring about this album as well. And I think I cared enough for what I got here for this to get away with a solid 7 out of 10. Not amazing, but I like it. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself that list, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.